are there. Okay. Okay. So okay. here uh, at the third line in the square bracket, I can see all the term is zero identically, right? Because mm -hmm. yeah, we know. Okay. okay. So if this whole third line uh, is uh, a third bracket uh, is zero, then the uh, variation of S bar is zero, of course. And that implies that the boundary term is also zero, right? Yes, yes. That's independently zero, actually. OK, so if the boundary term is zero, then in that case, we have defined this boundary term. Uh, to be PJ, the PJ variation QJ. OK, so in that case, can we just use this information that from here we can say PJ variation of QJ is equal to 0? Yeah, that's 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 actually quite intuitive. Because as this term is 0, we are saying that variation of this thing uh, evaluated over T1 up to T2, that thing should be 0 as well. Right. So can we just substitute that in our final equation? Yeah, that, that we can do, actually. That we can do. But the whole time trying to use, he was like really precise about the notation. So he kind of proves that. Proves that means like basically the same thing he does actually. Oh, okay. All right. So yeah, we can intuitively we can use that as well. Yeah. So all it means that whenever we are trying to value thing. We only consider that uh, variation of QK is zero at the boundary, nothing else. So here we, we were able to include a, one more term that is F term, because that's actually like F at uh, QPT evaluated at T1 say, it's just a number, some alpha, nothing else because um, F is a function of PQT and P is a function of T and Q is a function of T as well. So when you substitute all of those, it just gives you a number, a fixed number. So those are two numbers like we are uh, evaluating on the boundary. So variation of, of a number should be zero as well. OK, I think we're done, right? Uh, yes. It's 10 minutes already. So where were we? So what you can do is actually substitute back the okay so so here where we have the equation so far so we can write uh t1 up to t2 qj dot minus delta k by delta pj uh variation pj plus negative big pj dot minus delta big k by delta qj Variation QJ DT like that, and then, uh, like we started with PJ variation QJ, that was uh, what uh, it was PK variation QK minus variation F, right? This thing. So if we substitute the boundary condition, so PK variation QK evaluated at this, it's automatically zero, we know that. And also variation F uh, is uh, if evaluated at boundary T1 up to T2, it's nothing but variation of uh, F evaluated at T2 minus F evaluated at T1 so that gives you two numbers, alpha minus beta, and the uh, like variation over, over a fixed number is zero as well. So if you substitute 
that thing back and like substitute everything, you get this thing. Hmm? This thing to be zero. This thing to be zero. So by setting a variation of s bar equals to zero, we get uh, we get this thing that integration t1 up to t2 qj dot minus delta k over delta big pj variation pj uh, uh, plus pj negative pj dot negative delta k by delta qj variation qj dt this thing equals to zero right so yeah big the term means uh, the term inside the third bracket will be zero, right? Uh, yes, yes. The whole thing has to be zero. So coefficient of this thing and coefficient of that thing are independently zero, right? Because those are independent variations. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you end up having delta big K by delta pj equals to big qj dot this is one equation and another is uh, negative delta k big k by delta big qj equals to pj dot so so far we have in total in this transformation relation we have total five equations remember because we have to recollect all of those otherwise it won't work so one relation is that one that one so we have two right and another one is definition of k itself right because without the definition of k here you cannot work it so you need this equation as well but here you need the definition of f as well so if is defined by the other two relation that we derived over there where 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 here Here, so we have a set of five fundamental equations that are necessary to use this thing as an equation of motion. Actually, hmm? so we, we need to write it as a like a, in a in, in a single box in a clear manner, clearer manner. Let's collect those equations and write those down. Okay, so do you have this uh, this box equation written in your paper? Hello. Yes, yes. Yes. So that's the definition of f. Then, uh, do you have uh, written that uh, definition of k over here? Yes. And the Hamilton's equation of motion for k. Those, those two. So uh, uh, just write down one by one. So definition of f. Uh, how is it? How is it, uh, the f defined? Tell me. Definition of can you repeat the yeah. sorry, I didn't get it. Carla, are you saying something? Uh, no, I was just looking. Oh, okay, so I was just looking through. I'm sorry, I didn't realize. Oh, it's okay, it's okay. So uh, delta, uh, let me say uh, delta f by delta q k delta f by, by delta, delta q k equals to p k small p k small p k minus large uh, p j into delta big p j yeah, yeah sorry big p j big p j delta big p j delta, delta q j by delta q k small q k small cube and that's one equation one equation and then we need another one uh, so uh, delta, delta, f delta f by delta small p k small p k mm -hmm. equals, equals to, to minus uh capital p j negative p j mm -hmm. into uh delta q j by delta p k small p k yeah that's two equations then what's the definition of p k Big K, yes. Big K equals to um, 
it's it's a function of bq big p and t yes ft yes equals to uh, eight of uh eight small q small p and t mm -hmm. plus uh delta f by delta t delta t mm -hmm. uh, f will be a function of uh small q small p and t yeah so yeah actually let me write it down this way so uh, delta f of small q small q small t and t, t, and t by uh, delta t then plus uh, capital p j it's capital p j uh, into delta q j by delta t okay this is one and finally the equation of motion that we derived just yes uh, delta k by delta p j delta k by delta p j capital p j, p j, capital p j. Yeah. Equals to uh, Q J, Q J, and it's it, a de uh, dependency as well. So K is a function of B Q, B P, B -Q and T. Yes. yes. Equals okay. to. Uh, Just give, give me a moment. Just give me a moment, please. Okay. I want to. Be, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Equals to. Equals to uh, capital Q J. Uh, yes, there is a dot. Yeah. And. And then. Uh, minus. Delta K minus Delta K as a K function of as a function of capital P capital 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 P and T by yes. uh, Delta Q J Delta Q J equals to uh, P dot J J dot okay so these are five equation actually if we want to do something with this we need five equations so these two equations are basically Hamilton's equation of motion this equation is our uh, definition of transform Hamiltonian and the transform Hamiltonian has a definition of f inside of it. There are these two equations. So in this form, it's actually not useful that much. Hmm? It's not useful at all, I would say. You cannot solve uh, something with in this form. The previous Hamiltonian equation of motion, those were, were fine. So these are actually way more complicated. So it's, it's basically an intermediate version. We actually wanted to do a canon. We wanted to do a transformation on the phase space that produces the Hamilton's equation of motion, like that preserves the form of Hamilton's equation of motion that we got. And we got like, uh, what are the conditions you have to impose on that transformation rule? So that's what we got here, like this first two. Uh, so yeah, now we are here. Point is how to use it. See one thing, what happens if our transformed Hamiltonian K is zero identically? What happens then? Uh, can you please repeat the last sentence? So what happens, like if we demand that our transformation, like this, this, uh, this constitutes a system of uh, like transformations, like, uh, like, uh, uh, yeah. You can perform any code canonical transformation and all, uh, this thing will be satisfied. You can always find an F that satisfies this kind of relation. Hmm? Yes. Point is, we do not, like it has infinitely many possibilities inside of it already. So we want to pick one specific possibility that makes our transformed Hamiltonian to be trivial. By trivial means we want our transformed Hamiltonian to be zero. We want that kind of transformation. That's the goal. So we want that uh, uh, capital K is zero. Yes, our transformed Hamiltonian to be zero. That that would be like really interesting because these two equations, this these two equation would be really trivial because if K is trans transformed Hamiltonian is identically zero, then Q J dot and P J dot are zero separately. So it means transformed coordinate and transformed momenta are conserved quantities of motion. So those are actually constants of integration. That's all, right? Then we have to deal the other three only. Okay. Hmm? So we demand a transformation. We demand a transformation that old momenta to old moment, old coordinate to old momenta to new coordinate and new momenta, such that. 
our transformed Hamiltonian is identically zero. We want that kind of transformation because this five equation it satisfies every possible transformations. Like in, there are infinitely many possibilities that you can change your coordinate and momentum. Hmm? But we want to pick just one that makes our transformed Hamiltonian to be trivial or zero identically. Hmm? So if we pick that transformation, that's our goal. Like what would be that transformation which makes this uh, uh, Hamiltonian to be zero? Transformed Hamiltonian zero. What's that transformation? Hmm? That's that's our goal actually. To find. Hmm? So uh, it's just simple. Just substitute your k equals to zero and see what happens. Hmm? So if you do that, then the last two, the last two equations, like fourth and fifth equation, that automatically gives you qj dot equals to zero. That's one trivial equation and another pj dot equals to zero. Hmm? It basically implies qj pj. This space is constant of integration. Basically, those are conserved quantities. Hmm? And then what happens to the other three? So the definition of transformed Hamiltonian be as k equals to zero. So we end up having h as a function of q, p, and t plus delta f which is a function of q, p, and t by delta t plus, what was that? Uh, plus pj, capital pj. Capital pj. Times uh, delta qj by uh, delta t. Delta qj by delta t. Delta t equals to zero. Okay, one question. If uh, qj dot equals to zero, then is De, uh, is yeah, it the variation, del yeah, yeah, the partial derivative will also be zero. Yeah, it is zero. Is that correct or not, everyone? It's correct, I guess. Isn't it identically zero? No, 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 no. Q, qj uh, dot is zero identically. That's fine. Qj dot is zero. So Q you have to total time derivative is zero. Remember that doesn't mean partial time derivative is zero as well, because partial time derivative gives you something, and the other part that q q dot p dot part that gives you something else, and th those two things cancel. Okay. Hmm? So you cannot say that delta q j by delta t equals to zero automatically. Yeah, yeah. You have to be careful about that. Basically. Uh, the example uh, of that could be like this uh, for a falling particle like q equals to say um, y equals y minus uh, gt like that uh, sorry y plus gt actually yeah for a falling object so we know that y equals to uh, h minus gt and also uh, you have so if you take partial derivative of q with respect to t, you get g, but if you get q dot, that's zero. Hmm? Yeah, so that's you have to be careful about. Okay, so that's one thing. And what about the other two? What about the other two? Uh, we can uh, replace that's that delta by delta t times. We can uh, replace the delta f by delta t terms. We can replace uh, delta f by delta t. Uh, how? Uh, well, is it uh, helpful uh, by using the chain rule? No, no. D delta f by delta t is just explicit partial derivative. You cannot change that. If it was df over dt, then you would change that using chain rule. Huh? So this is you cannot do anything about. So next you just copy copy paste the other two. Hmm? What are those two equations? Just tell me. 
So this is one. And what other two? Delta F by delta Q K. Tell me, delta F by delta Q K equals to P K minus P K minus uh, P J. Delta Q J by delta. Delta Q J by delta Q K. Okay, small delta Q K. This one equation and another is uh, similarly again delta F by delta P K. Yeah. Small P K equals to negative P J. Okay. Delta Q J P K. Okay, so we end up having like when we demand one specific kind of transformation, this five equation reduced to this new five equation again. But now Q J dot and P J uh, P J dot are separately zero, so P J and Q J are just constants, constant of integration. Hmm? So we we only need to deal with this three equation, but it's, it's still not in the useful form. So we change our f into a new thing, like f is a function of q, p, and t. Hmm? We call it s, but we write our s in a tricky way. S again has the same dependency as q, uh, as f, but uh, like s has the same dependency on q as f was, but but for p we using the transformation rule we write our p in terms of new things that is we write our p in terms of uh, uh, q no 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 q big q and t can we do that question is can we do that uh, how yeah, we can do that. Let's see. So we had our like uh, one equation is big uh, Q K equals to big Q K as a function of Q P T, right? Or basically Q what as a function of Q P T. Basically, that's what I want to write. And also this thing. Yes. Hmm? Yes. So all we need to do we in this equation. We just solve for p here. So now, if we solve for p, p becomes a function of all the other variables. That is big Q, small Q, and t. So that's what we want to write. OK. Hmm? Yes. Convincing enough? So that's what we mean. Basically, f and s are same thing, but f as a, like, if F has an explicit dependence on P, but S has an explicit dependent on big Q instead of P. Hmm? Okay? Yes. Okay. So now let's evaluate a few things. Uh, let's evaluate a few things. So what is uh, delta S? Uh, sorry, what is delta F over delta T? What is this thing? Delta F over delta T, what's that? So according to chain rule, this is nothing but, see, S has two explicit time dependence. One is actual explicit time dependence, another is explicit but through P, right? So, yes. so we, according to chain rule, we can write Delta F over delta T is nothing but delta S over delta T plus delta S over delta P uh, delta P over delta T like that. Was it correct? No, 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 no. Actually, I do not want to write that. Uh, how do I write it? Yeah, actually, yeah, delta P over delta T. So you need to write the K as well. Hmm? Hello? Yes, yes. Uh, there is another term. Uh, which term? Uh, Peter, uh, Q, oh, well, Q term? No, 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 Q is not an explicit function of T. Function of, okay. it's a function of t, but not an explicit function. Explicit function means it appears explicitly. 
Okay. So okay. here, okay. this thing you mean, you have like p equals to like q squared plus 2i is q plus t, like that. It's an explicit function. So in the formula of p, t appears. That's what it means. So if you are not sure about chain rule. I didn't notice. Oh, no problem. Okay. Okay. Uh, what about the other? So, what about the other? We can write, so, using this thing, using this thing, actually, you can switch on the other side. So, we can write delta F by delta T minus delta S by delta PK, delta PK by delta T equals to delta S by delta T, right? Hmm? Yes. So do we have a relation for delta F over delta PK? Do we have a relation for delta F over delta PK? Uh, yes, we have a relation. Yeah. Uh, it is PK. Okay, so it gives us mm -hmm. uh, delta F over delta PK equal to delta T S equals to F. So it gives us plus PJ delta QJ by delta PK and then this thing delta PK by delta T equals to delta s by delta t, right? Hmm? Yes. So using chain rule and collecting these two terms, so we end up having delta f by delta t plus pj uh, delta qj by delta t equals to delta s by delta t. Uh, I should write T, J here, not T. Huh? Delta F by delta T plus PJ delta QJ by delta T equals to A, delta S by delta T when we switch like this. Hmm? So does this thing, this thing appear somewhere? Can you use that somewhere? See? Delta F by delta T plus PJ delta QJ by delta T equals to delta S by delta T. Can you substitute somewhere? Hmm? Can we substitute that somewhere? Yeah. Where? Uh, first equation of the page. Yes. So, uh, so here we can do that. So if we do that, we get h is a function of q p and t plus delta s by delta t because those two terms are now collected in s but remember s is now an explicit function of small q big q and t not as is explicit function of p anymore hmm? you can do that hello uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. What happens to the other equations when we do the same kind of thing? Add these two actually. Instead of f, now we are choosing s. So let's erase this thing and uh, derive those um, transformation rules as well. So, so we need delta f over delta q k, right? So delta f over delta q k. It appears s in two ways. One is uh, Q just explicitly appears, another is it appears through P. Also explicitly it means, right? So we can write delta S over delta Q plus delta S over delta P, PK. Actually, I should write indices. So let's index write I. So delta PI by delta QK. 
like that. Hmm? Delta F by delta QK means. Right? Yes. So F is basically S when we are calling, uh, talking about dependency on P. So we can replace S by F in that case. And we have delta S by delta QK plus what is delta F by delta PI? What is delta F by delta PI? Delta F by delta PI equal to minus capital minus PJ. capital Cap PJ. Delta Time capital delta PJ, but delta PJ by delta Q K Q I. Sorry. It's Q or P. Uh, sorry, sorry, it's PI. 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 Yeah, and again we have delta PI by delta Q K, right? So yes. by inverting chain, uh, chain rule, we have delta S over delta QK minus, like collect this, these two things. So we have PJ delta QJ by delta QK, right? Hmm? Yes, yes. So compare with the other part. So this is one side, like we have expanded this side here this side now compare with the other part this has to be equal to pk minus pj delta qj by delta qk so what we can conclude here what can we conclude here hmm? uh, the last two term will cancel each other which and two term PJ delta delta delta. Delta. Yeah. Yes. And finally, so in terms of S, in terms of S, this equation, where, 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 this equation, this equation becomes in terms of S, delta S by delta QK equals to PK. Hmm. That's much simpler, right? Yes. Okay. What about the other one? Or um, what happens to this one? Okay. So let's let's write down that explicitly as well. Hmm? So so we got one, and now we are aiming for another one. So delta f by delta p k. Uh, actually, delta f by delta p k doesn't lead us somewhere. It doesn't lead us anywhere. So we need to evaluate this thing, delta S by delta B Q K. This thing. Hmm? So inside of S that appears B Q K through P. So we can write delta S by delta P I, delta P I by delta Q K, right? Yes. And for dependency on P, S is just F, so we can replace it. And what is delta F by delta PI? We just saw. Uh, delta F by delta PI uh, equal to minus. Delta F by delta PI equals to minus. Uh, PJ times PJ. Uh, delta, delta PJ by delta PI. It's delta not. pi right and then delta pi by delta uh qk right yeah so using chain rule yeah, delta uh, sorry chronic delta. yeah using chain rule we get pj and then uh, using chain rule we get delta qj by delta qk hmm? yes what is that Delta QJ by delta QK is chronic delta, delta JK. So oh. we end up having minus PK. Yeah. So in terms of S, our the another transformation equation, like equation for F, it becomes delta S by delta QK equals to negative PK. So these are our new five equations that we need to write. So uh, first, BQK dot 
equals to zero. Big P K dot equals to zero. These are two trivial equations. Then we have H like uh, the transformed Hamiltonian equation that is H of as a function of Q P and T plus delta S, but S is written as a function of Q big Q and T. Remember by delta T equals to zero. And the last two, the transformation relation, those are delta S, again, S is the function of Q, B, Q, and T. On delta Q, K equals to P, K. And another one, delta S as a function of Q, B, Q, and T. Over delta B, Q, K gives us negative B, P, K. These are five equations that are useful, and these five equations as a set known as Hamilton Jacobi equation. Yeah, and uh, is there a symmetry between uh, capital Q and the small q? Well, uh, the yeah, last yeah. equation. You just, have a, you just have a minus sign. Like these are the transformation rules. So do not seek for a symmetry between those because you can write in another other ways as well. Hmm? This is just one of the many ways that you can write it. So this this, this set is called Hamilton Jacobi equation. So out of this thing to solve Hamilton Jacobi, basic equation actually you work with this one. This is the starting point of your theory. Huh. And another two equation, this thing and that thing, like QK dot and PK dot, those are zero identically. So usually it doesn't appear in Hamilton Jacobi equation, set of Hamilton Jacobi, we just understand that big P and big Q are constants. So usually without any ambiguity, we can erase those because we know those are actually constants. We need not to write it again. So these three are because, um, basically the set of Hamilton Jacobi equation, but usually by Hamilton Jacobi equation, people mean this, this equation actually. The other two equation, this one is basically the definition of momentum and this is basically the definition of transformation rule, like uh, transformed uh, momentum. So by solving these three simultaneously, you can solve your uh, like uh, uh, mechanical problem. So it gives rise to a direct integration procedure. That's, that's the beauty of it. Uh, I have a little problem in uh, mm -hmm. the equation of uh, the fourth equation. Mm -hmm. uh, fourth delta equation? S of oh. delta QK, its calculation, I have some problem. It was uh, done two minutes ago. So, what calculation? Yeah, I, I can go about a little yes, bit. Yes, about. I need to go above. Yes. So, yes, what yes, yes, yes. Uh, I did not get that how uh, delta S by delta QK became PK. Oh, <laughs> look, this term, this term and that term cancel out, right? This is basically delta S by delta QK. We expanded the left hand side and this was already the right hand side. So these two terms cancel out on both sides. So we end up having delta S by delta QK equals to PK. Oh, okay. So we'll see how we, we can solve it. And uh, I was looking for some problem here, but we didn't find any good one. Actually, we can make up something like some trivial problem that uh, a, a releasing a particle from somewhere, a projectile motion or um, a harmonic oscillator. This kind of problem like are pretty standard. So let's have a break. After the break, we will study a specific problem and then we'll go into like comparing these four form standard formalisms so this hamilton jacobi equation i should tell something about it it's it's the most sophisticated classical mechanical uh, equation and the uh, our quantum mechanics like the schrodinger equation it gives like uh, hamilton jacobi equation automatically gives rise to quantum mechanics when you consider uh, is to be a 
like uh, you ch make a change of variable like s is a log psi and also consider like your uh, coordinate and momentum as operators so this is basically the classical analog of schrodinger equation because schrodinger equation you have h psi equals to uh, i h cut delta psi by delta t basically i should write like this so these are actually like uh, this equation is the one classical analog of quantum mechanical Schrodinger equation. Mm -hmm. So is there any question so far? Uh, I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, is this the case that we can choose any s, any s as a function of small q, capital Q, and t, and just put into our equation, and that will pop up a new coordinate, capital Q. Uh, yes, capital yes, t. yes, yes, yes. Like, uh, but then you do not have necessarily your as you have like picked your uh, s arbitrarily. You do not have that uh, freedom that your k equals to zero. So you have to consider the other equation that we have erased here. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So then, like when you handpick something arbitrarily, then you have that pipe set of equations, like here, here. This pipe set of equation you have to use. I mean, in the uh, Hamilton Jacobi equation that we have collected here. Uh, it doesn't seem like there is any restriction on S. Uh, no, there is because uh, like choosing F and choosing S are similar, right? Right. Basically the same thing. Okay. Hmm? So yes. if you hand, hand pick your F, then you necessarily do not have your K to be zero. So then you have to use these two equation as well. But if we impose the other way, that initially I do not know what my f is, but I demand my k to be zero. Oh, all right. All right. Do not have that freedom on s or f. Okay, thank you. Uh, can I see the calculation of the uh, last two equations? I want to write them on my paper. Well. Uh, okay. Uh, no, no, uh, the derivation of the last two equations. Oh, here, here. Uh, okay. Okay, uh, I'll come back within uh, seven more minutes. Actually, I'm feeling dizzy, that's the problem. <laughs> If you have any question, you can ask.
Um, yes. Uh, okay. Uh, in the uh, line uh, minus p j into delta q j by delta q k shown minus p k. Uh, how this became minus p k? Ah. Uh. What is uh, what is delta Q J by delta Q K? What's that? Delta Q J, like delta Q one by delta Q two. What's that? What is delta Q one over delta Q two? Look, Q one and Q two totally <laughs> two independent coordinates. This is basically okay. saying what happens in polar coordinate delta r over delta phi. What's that? This is zero. Okay. So delta q1 by delta q2 equals to zero. Similarly, delta q1 by delta q1 equals to one. So basically, one. whenever you have same index, it's one. Whenever you have different index, it, it is zero. So it means delta qi by delta qk equals to chronic at delta i k and you have a sum over uh, actually we are talking about j so so j so you have a sum over j so that gives you negative pk okay okay So basically, we are almost done with our brief review of classical mechanics. We need just one more class, I believe, to complete. So now we will uh, see two-body central force problem using all these four formalisms. I think we can start it today. But it will take some time to finish. Two more minutes and we will start again. Um, how did we get that equation, uh, the first one on this page? First one, which one? Delta F by delta QK equals to delta S by delta QK plus delta F, uh, this oh, one. That's, that's because we considered our F to be, F and S are same, but the difference is like explicit dependence. Numerically, they are same. Uh, F is written as a function of P, but instead S is written as a function of Instead of p, it's written as function of explicitly q, small q, big q, and t. So using chain rule, okay, uh, we, we get that chain rule partial derivative. So explicitly means it uh, particular it depends totally on that function, right? Uh, which function? No, okay, say I'll give you an example. I can give you an example. So say your uh, your f equals to like q square multiplied by p uh, p like that also your p equals to uh, small q big q square into t hmm? then your a should be same thing q square multiplied by p that is q q square t that is q to the power 4 q uh, sorry, q q cubed actually q cubed uh, q square in t. Numerically, f and s are same, but explicitly, explicitly f depends on linearly on p. 
but in, in the expression of S, you do not have any P. Instead, you have just Q, B, Q, and T. Okay. Okay. So I think it's, uh, if you guys are done, then uh, you can ask any question, like if you want, because uh, this part is really conceptual. So, and uh, as I said, this is the most sophisticated part of classical mechanics. So it takes a lot of time to understand. And usually even in grad school, sometimes uh, people do not emphasize much on these things. So it, these things are hard, definitely. For undergrad, it's really hard. And it's a standard thing for grad school, but not all grad school emphasis on this kind of thing. So uh, it's better to take, say, take some time and understand what's going on and ask, uh, asking some questions. Like uh, if I miss something, then it'll, it could clarify some points that I should have mentioned, but I failed to mention. So please take a little bit of time and try to understand if, uh, if there are any thing that you want to ask or anything you missed or I missed, whatever. So should I proceed or you guys want to ask some questions? We can proceed to solve one problem, right? First. Yeah, it will be better. Okay, let's do one trivial problem. So let's do a classical mechanics problem. Uh, that projectile motion in three dimension. Hmm? So the question is, uh, you have your uh, coordinate set up like this, x, y, and z. Uh, oops, what is it? And from the origin, you throw a particle on YZ plane. That means your initial data is given like this. Initially, X at zero, at X at zero means X at time zero equals to zero. Y at time zero equals to zero. And Z at time zero equals to zero as well. But for velocity, VX at zero, that's zero again. VY at zero, say that is vy naught and vz at zero that's vz naught question is what would be the trajectory what would be the position of that particle position means x as a function of time what is that y is a function of time what is that and z is a function of time what's that so solve this problem using hamilton jacobi we have been doing this from high school but using Newton's law. Hmm? We usually do not do this kind of problem using even Lagrangian, but let's do it with Hamilton's Jacobi, what happens? So what would be the Lagrangian for a, for a particle thrown like that? What would be the Lagrangian? Because uh, to find Hamiltonian, first you need to find the Lagrangian. So what's yeah. the Lagrangian? One by two. Half? Uh, half M. Hmm? M uh, times x dot is square. X dot is squared. Uh, plus y dot is square. Plus y dot is squared. Uh, plus z dot is square. Plus z dot is squared. And then? Uh, minus. Minus. Uh, M G Z. M G Z. Yeah, uh, that's I think, I think mm -hmm. we can just give off the x dot is square term. What term? Uh, x dot is square term. No, uh, no, no. You are doing in three dimension. You have to stick with that. You cannot reduce your there, dimension. There is no velocity. Yeah. How do you know that uh, uh, as you do not have initial velocity in x direction, you, you won't end up with having one later. But there is no acceleration in that direction. So no. Whenever you, so whenever your problem says you are in three dimension, Never ever suppress one one of those dimension uh, without solving anything. Okay. 
because actually in the exam i'm going to set up that kind of question so probably this will be in the final exam this will be the midterm exam that's coming out so so never ever do that whenever you are doing newtonian whenever you are doing lagrangian when i say three dimension means you have to use x y z no other way around if that equation of motion in that direction could be trivial but i want to see that you understand that's trivial okay okay so what would, what would be the hamiltonian here hmm? so uh, what would be momentum here first px would be delta l by delta x dot py yeah, would yeah. be delta, delta l by y dot and then E Z would be delta, delta. L by Z dot. Hmm? Yeah. So Hamiltonian is by definition E X X dot plus P Y Y dot. P Y Y dot plus E Z Z dot minus Lagrangian, right? Yeah. So do the algebra and you'll end up having one over twice. One by two, yeah. Twice. Eh? E X square plus P Y square plus p z squared just do the algebra and you have that plus m g z this is your hamiltonian hmm? yes so substitute this thing in, in your hamilton jacobi equation so your hamilton jacobi equation is h plus delta s by delta t this is one equation right this is the top equation like yes. uh, one of those three equations so this is a, uh, this is what I have written h plus delta s by delta t equals to zero. Then delta s by delta coordinate equals to momentus. That means here you have p x equals to delta s by delta x, p y equals to delta s by delta y, and p z equals to delta s by delta z. So substitute this, this thing inside of your Hamiltonian and write the Hamilton Jacobi equation explicitly. So you will have one over twice m delta s over delta x whole squared. Uh, Vai, can you go a little bit slower? I can uh, write it. Really. You are writing very fast. Okay. Okay, this is a partial differential equation, right? We have written our Hamilton Jacobi equation. So to do Hamilton Jacobi, you all you have to start with h plus delta s by delta t equals to zero, and inside of h you have your momentas. Uh, replace your momentas with the derivative of s. That's that's the first step, always. Hmm? That's what I have done here. Oh, okay. Are you guys following up to this point? Yeah. I have written down the Hamiltonian for a projectile particle that uh, particle was thrown into air. Then uh, I have written down the Hamilton Jacobi equation, but inside of that Hamiltonian, you have to replace your momentum uh, by that delta is by delta coordinate. All those momentums you have to replace. That's the first stage step to do that hmm? the next step is to find a separation so try for something s equals to something that actually separates this equation so the usual procedure is to write like that s has a particular part that is only dependent on time plus s has a particular part that's only dependent on coordinate x another part that's only dependent on coordinate y plus another part that's only dependent on coordinate z this is my answers hmm? uh, um, actually i wrote the opposite is that the correct way or 
I think that's the correct way, right? So this is you substitute here. This is your trial, hmm? your answer. Okay. Are you following? Uh, yes. So if you substitute, see, if you so, substitute. Well, uh, why uh, these terms are added uh, and not multiplied? Yeah, this is my answer. If this work, then we are done. If it doesn't work, then you have to try something else. So for Hamilton Jacobi, remember usually uh, if this kind of additive term doesn't work, probably you cannot find a like comfortable function by just seeing that like what um, looking over it, you cannot find uh, answer for it. Uh, so, is there any intuition behind this? Yes. Yes, there is. So in Hamilton Jacobi, you have always like. Uh, partial deriv derivative whole square or just partial derivative squared added like that. So whenever you you have this kind of ansatz that automatically separates your uh, system. So whenever you have a separated system, you're done. So that's that's the main goal here. Okay. Understand. So ansatz means assumptions, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Your trial. Ansatz is the trial. Ansatz means trial. Yeah. Educated guess. We know that it will work, or we have seen problems that it works. So, if you can find an answer, then that Hamilton Jacobi is called separable. If you cannot find an answer that works, then uh, it's not a separable system. Uh, so, actually, I can find out the value of this TSX and DXY uh, by comparing with the uh, momentum. Uh, for example, uh, del s del x equal to e x, and from here I can find out the value of s uh, as a function of e x. Yes, yes. You have by separating we mean that. So you have to like it's a partial differential equation. Every partial differential equation has infinitely many possible solutions, but we do not need everything. We just need one. One that works. Yes. Okay. So let's see one thing. What happens if you take delta s by delta x? See, all of the term vanishes. That's why it's separable. Like it separates the thing. So, and you end up having ds x over dx. And the same thing uh, is true for every other variable, right? So that automatically, whenever you substitute that thing, it gives you one over twice m dsx over dx whole squared plus dsy over dy whole squared plus dsz over dz whole squared plus mgz plus dst over dt equals to zero right uh, yes so okay. now we have four differential equations uh you can separate as four differential equations actually three differential equations so see for this term dst over dt hmm? this whole thing up to this point there wasn't any time dependent thing here because all of those are explicit dependent on either x y or z right uh, yes. So the only time dependence should be only here. And if this thing is an explicit function of time, then the other part must be an explicit function of time. So other part is not an explicit function of time. So this thing cannot be an explicit function of time. It has to be a constant. Yeah. Otherwise it won't work. Like it doesn't have any time inside of it. So if this thing has, then the other part has to. So we can separate like this dst over dt equals to some constant e. This can be integrated by giving uh, 